In the lavish command center of the Galactic Empire's flagship, Voracious, the air was thick with derision. A council of alien leaders gathered, their eyes fixed on a large holographic display showcasing various species of the universe. When Earth's image flickered onto the screen, laughter erupted. Admiral Zorv, a towering figure with iridescent scales, sneered, Ah, Earth, still struggling with combustion engines and internal conflicts. How quaint! His voice boomed, resonating off the metallic walls. Beside him, General Mrek, with his multiple eyes gleaming, chimed in, Indeed, Zorv. It's a wonder they've made it this far in the cosmos without self-destructing. On Earth, Captain Jonathan Jax West watched the live feed from a covert surveillance probe, his jaw clenched in frustration. Seated in the dimly lit briefing room of the Earth Space Navy, he was not alone. Lieutenant Kyle Riggs and Dr. Eric Sato, the lead scientist, shared his grim determination. Jax turned to his comrades. You hear that? They think we're a joke. It's time we wipe that smugness off their faces. Kyle, ever the strategist, leaned forward. We've been underestimated, which could work to our advantage. They won't expect a countermove, not from us. Dr. Sato, older and more measured, adjusted his glasses. Our tech has improved, Jax. If we could enhance the cloaking device I've been working on, we might just be able to sneak into their next big council meeting. Imagine the intelligence we could gather. Jax nodded, his mind racing with possibilities. Kyle, gather the pilots. Eric, I need that device operational. We're going to show the galaxy just what Earth can do. The men dispersed, each to his task, driven by a shared goal. Over the next few days, the Earth Space Navy base became a hive of activity. Technicians and scientists collaborated closely, retrofitting fighters with the latest stealth technology and arming them with newly developed pulse cannons. Meanwhile, in his quarters, Jax prepared for the mission. The weight of command lay heavy on his shoulders, yet the fire in his eyes spoke of his unyielding spirit. He rehearsed the plan with his crew, each member keenly aware of the stakes. Finally, the day of the mission arrived. The intrepid, now a shadow among stars thanks to Dr. Sato's cloaking device, approached the location of the next Galactic Council meeting. Jax, Kyle, and a select team of elite pilots manned the controls, their faces set in grim determination. Jax's voice was steady as he addressed his team. This is more than a mission. It's our chance to stand up for Earth. We're not just fighting for our planet, but for our place in the universe. Let's make sure they never underestimate humanity again. The intrepid slid into position, undetected by the alien fleet's sensors. Jax and his crew held their breath as they hovered on the brink of the unknown, ready to shift the galaxy's perception of Earth forever. The silence of space enveloped the intrepid as it hovered near the site of the Galactic Council's next meeting. Captain Jax West and his team were poised in their cloaked vessel, hearts pounding with the gravity of their mission. The crew's focus was unbreakable as they waited for the right moment to strike, to gather intelligence that could tip the scales in humanity's favor. Radar's clear, Captain whispered Lieutenant Kyle Riggs, his eyes glued to the sensor panel. No sign of detection from any of the alien ships. Dr. Eric Sato monitored the cloaking device's readings, ensuring their invisibility remained intact. Energy levels are stable. The cloak is holding. Jax nodded, a silent gesture of approval. He turned to his communications officer, Sergeant Mark Lee. Mark, keep scanning their frequencies. Anything unusual, you let me know immediately. As the alien delegates began to arrive in their ornate ships, the Earth team listened intently to the intercepted communications. The aliens' confidence was palpable, their security lax as they joked about the lesser species they governed. Suddenly, a sharp beep pierced the quiet. Mark tensed, his fingers flying over the console. Captain, you're going to want to hear this. Picking up a new signal, it's... it's a distress call nearby. Jax's eyes narrowed. Can we afford to check it out, Kyle? Kyle reviewed their position and the surrounding space. It's on our way out. Minimal deviation required. It might actually cover our exit. Then we check it out. Jax decided swiftly. If there's one thing Earth stands for, it's aiding those in need. The intrepid made a calculated detour towards the source of the distress signal. As they approached, the scene unfolded on their screens. A civilian vessel, unmistakably human-made, was besieged by a small band of pirate ships, likely emboldened by the Galactic Empire's disdain for Earth. We've got civilians in trouble, weapons hot, let's make this quick, Jax ordered, his voice firm with resolve. The Intrepid dropped its cloak, revealing its presence with a barrage of pulse fire that caught the pirates off guard. 
Within minutes, the pirates were disabled, floating helplessly in space. Jax contacted the civilian ship. This is Captain Jax West of the Earth Space Navy. Are you all right? A relieved voice responded. Yes, Captain. Thanks to you. We didn't think anyone would come. As they escorted the civilian ship to safety, a sudden onslaught of energy pulses rained down upon them. The Intrepid rocked violently under the unexpected attack. Alarms blared, and the crew was thrown into disarray. It's a trap! Kyle shouted, gripping his console. Through the chaos, Jack saw their attackers, ships bearing the insignias of the Galactic Empire. The distress call had been a setup, a cruel joke to capture or kill Earth's bravest. Full retreat! Get us out of here now! Jax commanded, his heart racing as he maneuvered the Intrepid through a storm of enemy fire. As they limped away from the ambush, the damage to the Intrepid was severe. Life support was critical, and casualties were mounting. Yet, amidst the smoke and sirens, Jax's resolve hardened like steel. They want to mock us, laugh at us. Jax's voice was a fierce growl over the ship's comm system. We're going to show them exactly what Earth is made of. Prepare for war. The crew, battered but unbroken, rallied behind him. They had been deceived and attacked, but it only fueled their determination to fight back. Earth would no longer be the universe's laughingstock. The time had come for their courage and cunning to shine. As the Intrepid set a course back to Earth, the stage was set for humanity to rise and confront their tormentors head-on. The Intrepid limped back to Earth, scarred and battle-worn, a stark testament to the Galactic Empire's hostility. Its arrival was met with shock and dismay. The sight of the battered flagship stirred a tempest of emotion among the world's populace and leaders alike. Earth's fragmented nations, already tense with their own squabbles, were suddenly faced with an external threat that could no longer be ignored. Captain Jax West stood before the United Nations, broadcast globally, his expression grave but his voice resolute. Ladies and gentlemen of Earth, he began, we have been attacked, mocked, and underestimated by the Galactic Empire. But we have an opportunity, an opportunity to show them who we are, to stand united. In the crowd, murmurs of agreement mixed with those of apprehension. Jax knew he needed more than words to sway the world's leaders. He turned to his allies, Lieutenant Kyle Riggs and Dr. Eric Sato, who stood ready with evidence of the Empire's deceit and brutality. Kyle stepped forward, presenting intercepted communications and visuals of the ambush, revealing the Empire's underhanded tactics. This was no random attack, Kyle declared. It was a targeted strike, meant to eliminate Earth's potential resistance. We must respond, or we risk further aggression, perhaps even annihilation. Dr. Sato followed showcasing the technological advancements Earth had achieved under the radar, advances that could level the playing field. Our technology has progressed faster than the Empire knows. With unity and further development, we can protect our home. The assembly was silent, the weight of their decision palpable in the air. It was then that Chancellor Rivera, representing one of Earth's principal nations, stood. What you ask is not simple, Captain West, but the threat is clear. We must stand as one or fall divided. One by one, other leaders voiced their support. A pact was forged that day, the birth of the United Earth Defense Force, UEDF, with Jax at its helm. The news spread like wildfire, igniting a sense of urgency and purpose across the globe. Earth began to prepare, industries pivoting to support the war effort, citizens enlisting to defend their home. Jax returned to the military base, now bustling with activity where he convened with his top advisors and friends. We have their support, but now comes the hard part, he admitted, poring over strategic maps and potential battle plans. Kyle, now promoted to commander, nodded in agreement. We'll need to train our forces, expand our fleet, and integrate the technologies Eric has developed. Every second counts. Dr. Sato, tasked with weaponizing his scientific breakthroughs, added, I'm already on it. The new energy shields and propulsion systems will be ready for testing within the week. In the weeks that followed, Earth transformed. Training camps sprouted up, scientists and engineers labored day and night, and the people of Earth united under a common cause. In every city, posters of Jax and his stirring words adorned the walls, for the honor of humanity. As Earth's fleet expanded and its defenses solidified, Jax watched from the command center of the newly constructed UEDF headquarters. He knew the road ahead would be fraught with peril, but for the first time in history, Earth was truly united. With a deep breath, he steeled himself for the next phase of their plan. 
The time to test their metal against the galaxy's giants was approaching, and Earth was ready to face it head-on. Back on Earth, the newly unified nations worked tirelessly, driven by a common goal under the banner of the United Earth Defense Force, UEDF. As Earth's industries pivoted to support the war effort, old rivalries were set aside, replaced by a collaboration that spanned continents and ideologies. The urgency was palpable. The threat of the Galactic Empire loomed large, but so did Earth's determination to defend itself. In the quiet seclusion of his office at UEDF headquarters, Captain Jax West reviewed reports from the field. His focus was interrupted by Dr. Eric Sato, who burst in with a mixture of excitement and urgency. Jax, you need to see this, he said, handing over a tablet filled with sensor data and satellite imagery. What am I looking at? Jax asked, peering at the images. Hidden arsenals, Eric replied. Decades ago, during the last global tensions, secret projects developed advanced weaponry, stuff not even you have seen. These were mothballed, forgotten about when peace was brokered. They're still out there, hidden away. Jax looked up, realization dawning on him. You're saying we have more firepower? Exactly, and I know where. We found several caches, under the Pacific, buried in the Sahara, frozen beneath Siberia. These aren't just weapons. There are experimental ships, defensive systems, even some prototype AI combat units. The potential of such a find was immense. Jax immediately called a meeting with his top advisors and military strategists, including Commander Kyle Riggs. Together, they planned expeditions to recover these hidden assets. Each location was a relic of Earth's fragmented past, now serving a unified present. Under Jax's orders, specialized teams, including marine archaeologists, desert survival experts, and cold environment engineers, were dispatched to the sites. The operations were risky, given the instability of some of the old tech and the potential for booby traps left from bygone paranoid days. However, the rewards outweighed the risks exponentially. One by one, the teams reported success. In the Pacific, divers discovered an underwater facility housing advanced torpedoes and submersible drones capable of atmospheric exit and re-entry. In the Sahara, buried beneath layers of sand and rock, were hangars filled with high-speed reconnaissance crafts equipped with stealth technology. Siberia yielded the most surprising cache, a fully operational command center with a stockpile of energy weapons and a fleet of drone fighters. As these assets were recovered and brought online, Jax and his team worked to integrate them into the UEDF's existing arsenal. Training programs were rapidly developed to bring pilots and crews up to speed on the advanced systems. Meanwhile, Dr. Sato focused on reverse engineering the more exotic technologies. His team managed to enhance their energy shielding capabilities by studying the old prototype systems, providing a significant boost to their defensive measures. As word of these discoveries spread throughout Earth's command structure, morale soared. The soldiers and citizens alike felt a renewed surge of hope and confidence. They were not just fighting with what they had. They were fighting with the full might of Earth's long-hidden potential. Watching the live feeds from the recovery sites, Jax felt a profound sense of pride. Earth was no longer scrambling to defend itself with outdated technology. They were bringing the full weight of their rediscovered capabilities to bear against the Galactic Empire. The Empire thinks they know what we're capable of. Jax mused to Kyle, who stood watching alongside him. Let's show them how wrong they are. With their hidden arsenal now in the light and added to their combat capabilities, Earth was no longer just reacting. It was taking the initiative. The stage was set for humanity to strike back, to prove their mettle and earn the respect they deserved on the galactic stage. As the preparations for their first offensive operation began, Jax knew this was their moment to turn the tide. Under the veil of darkness, Earth's newly equipped fleet a marvel of unified human effort and reclaimed technology, stood ready. Captain Jax West, now regarded as the vanguard of Earth's defiance, eyed the holographic star maps spread out before him. The target was clear, a remote but strategically significant outpost of the Galactic Empire, located in a sector where their communications arrays amplified their control over nearby systems. We strike here, Jax pointed at the glowing point on the map addressing his assembled commanders and squad leaders in the war room of the UEDF headquarters. This outpost is the linchpin for a dozen sectors. We take it down, and we fracture their grid. It'll throw them into chaos, at least temporarily. Commander Kyle Riggs, now his second-in-command, nodded in agreement. It's well defended, but with our new tech we have the element of surprise. Their sensors won't see us coming until it's too late. 
Dr. Eric Sato chimed in with a note of caution. The stealth approach is solid, but once we engage, it'll be a firefight. We need to maintain the advantage as long as possible. Preparations were swift and meticulous. The fleet, comprising stealth cruisers, drone fighters, and a handful of heavy destroyers retrofitted with the newly integrated weapons, moved into position. Pilots and crew were briefed, their spirits high, fueled by the possibility of striking a real blow against the Empire. The operation commenced under the cover of an artificially created solar flare, a brilliant diversion concocted by Dr. Sato's team to mask their approach. As the fleet neared the outpost, the silence was palpable, every soldier, pilot, and officer holding their breath as they slipped through enemy detectors. Jax, aboard the flagship Vindicator, watched as the outpost came into view, a structure bristling with antennas and weapon emplacements. Deploy all fighters, activate stealth mode, and engage on my mark, he commanded, his voice a calm in the storm. The first wave was a symphony of precision and discipline. Stealth fighters, nearly invisible to the naked eye, swooped down on the outpost, their weapons disabling the communication arrays before the Empire could mount a significant defense. Drone swarms followed, overwhelming the outpost's automated defenses with sheer numbers and coordinated attacks. However, as the battle progressed, the outpost managed to activate its distress protocols, sending a pulse signal out into the depths of space. They're calling for reinforcements. We need to wrap this up quickly, Kyle reported his eyes fixed on the incoming enemy signatures. Jax nodded, directing his forces with a tactical acumen honed by years of training and real-world experience. All units, full assault. Let's take this place down before their help arrives. The final push was brutal. Earth's forces, empowered by their advanced arsenal, clashed with the first of the arriving Empire reinforcements. It was a test of their new capabilities, and they met the challenge head-on the outpost falling into their hands just as additional enemy ships began warping into the sector. In the aftermath, the victory was not without cost, but the strategic gain was undeniable. Images of the seized outpost, now flying Earth's flags, were broadcast across human media networks, a clear message to the galaxy. Earth was no longer playing defense. They were an offensive force capable of outmaneuvering and outfighting the Empire. Back at UEDF headquarters, the mood was celebratory, but tempered with the knowledge of the long road ahead. Jax addressed his team, a grim satisfaction in his tone. Today we've shown that Earth can strike back, that we're not to be underestimated. Let this victory remind everyone in this galaxy who we are and what we're fighting for. As the fleet regrouped and prepared for the inevitable counterattacks, the war for Earth's respect and rightful place in the galaxy had truly begun. With their first successful strike against the Galactic Empire, humanity's resolve was stronger than ever, and their message was clear. Underestimate them at your peril. Following their successful strike on the Galactic Empire's outpost, Earth braced for the inevitable backlash. The Empire, stunned by the audacity and effectiveness of Earth's assault, was not about to let such a challenge go unanswered. The galaxy watched in tense anticipation as warships, previously stationed in the most secure sectors of the Empire, began their march toward Earth's solar system. Captain Jax West stood before his assembled officers in the command center of UEDF headquarters, reviewing the latest intelligence reports. The Empire is mobilizing a significant portion of its fleet, he announced, his voice steady despite the grim news. They're coming in force, aiming to crush us once and for all. Commander Kyle Riggs analyzed the data streaming in, his expression focused. Their armada is massive, but they're underestimating our defensive capabilities. With our new tech and the element of surprise gone, we'll rely on strategy and our home field advantage. Dr. Eric Sato, who had been refining Earth's defensive systems, chimed in. I've made enhancements to our satellite defenses around Earth and the Moon. They won't be expecting the firepower we've hidden up there. As the enemy fleet approached, Earth's citizens watched the skies, their fear mingled with defiance. Volunteers and recruits continued to flood UEDF's training centers, their resolve hardened by the sight of their planet under threat. Earth's governments broadcast messages of unity and resilience, rallying their people to support the war effort. Jax coordinated Earth's defenses from the Vindicator, positioned strategically between Earth and the approaching armada. All units, this is it he declared as the enemy ships came into range. Hold the line. Protect Earth at all costs. Remember, we're not just fighting for today, but for our future. The first wave of the battle began with Earth unleashing a barrage of missiles from lunar and orbital platforms, catching the front line of the Empire's fleet off guard. 
Explosions lit up the dark expanse of space as ship after ship was either crippled or destroyed. Yet the Empire's numbers were overwhelming. Wave after wave of fighters poured from the carriers, swarming towards Earth's defenses. The UEDF pilots met them head-on, their ships darting through the chaos, guided by the precise commands of their captains. In the midst of the battle, Jax noticed a gap in the enemy's formation on his tactical display. Kyle, take squadrons three through seven and hit their flank now, he ordered. Kyle nodded, relaying the orders as his ship peeled off to lead the counterattack. For hours, the battle raged. Earth's forces fought desperately, managing to hold their ground against the superior numbers of the Empire. As casualties mounted on both sides, the tide of the battle teetered on the edge of a knife. In a bold move, Jax directed a group of drones to feign a retreat, drawing a segment of the enemy fleet away from Earth. As the Empire's ships pursued, they were led into a trap, a minefield of delayed action bombs Earth had planted in anticipation of such a maneuver. With a significant portion of the enemy fleet either destroyed or disabled, the remaining Empire forces began to falter. Sensing the shift, Jax seized the moment. All forces, push forward, drive them back! The UEDF surged, and what started as a controlled push soon turned into a rout. The Empire ships, unable to maintain their cohesion, began a disorganized retreat. Earth's forces, though battered, had held firm. They cheered as the last of the enemy ships warped away, leaving behind a battlefield strewn with debris. Back on Earth, the news of the victory spread quickly, met with relief and jubilation. Jax, however, remained somber as he assessed the cost. We've won the battle, but not the war, he told his crew. Stay vigilant, repair and regroup. They will come at us again, but we will be ready. As the Vindicator set course back to Earth, its crew weary yet undefeated, the resolve of Earth's people was stronger than ever. The Galactic Empire had thrown its best at them, and they had stood firm. Now, more than ever, Earth was united in its purpose to claim its place among the stars. After repelling the massive assault by the Galactic Empire, Earth's forces had little time to rest. Captain Jax West knew that while they had won a significant battle, the war was far from over. The Empire would be reeling from their losses, but they were too vast and too proud to let defeat go unavenged. Earth needed to capitalize on this moment to strike a decisive blow that would shift the balance of power permanently. In the war room aboard the UEDF flagship Vindicator, Jax convened his top advisors to plan their next move. The Empire's fleet is scattered, their command structure in disarray, Jax outlined, pointing to the star map displaying enemy movements. We have a narrow window to target their core facilities, to disrupt their ability to regroup. Commander Kyle Riggs suggested, their logistics hub in the Orion sector, if we take it out, it'll choke their supply lines and cripple their operational capabilities. Dr. Eric Sato, who had been working tirelessly to improve their weapon systems, added, I've upgraded our long-range missiles with quantum payloads. They're more than capable of breaching the hub's defenses. The plan was audacious. The logistics hub was heavily fortified, located deep within a region of space littered with sensor arrays and automated defense satellites but with their new technology and the element of surprise still on their side, it was feasible. Jax approved the operation, codenamed Orion Strike. Preparations went underway immediately, with fleets mobilizing and new weapons being loaded into the ships. The Vindicator led the charge, with Jax at the helm, his resolve as unyielding as the hull of his ship. As they approached the Orion sector, the tension among the crew was palpable. The stealth approach worked perfectly, slipping past the outer sensor arrays undetected. However, as they neared the hub, a squadron of Empire drones detected their presence, triggering a full-scale alarm. We're compromised, but not beaten. All ships, engage at will, Jax commanded, his voice booming through the comms. The battle was fierce, with Earth's forces pushing through waves of drones and defensive turrets. The quantum missiles proved their worth ripping through the hub's shields and exposing its core to attack. Squadrons of fighter ships swooped in, delivering the final payloads that would cripple the facility. Meanwhile, Jax led a daring maneuver aboard the Vindicator. Prepare to breach the command center. We take the hub. We control their network, he instructed his tactical team. The docking was risky, with enemy fire pelting the hull. But once inside, Jax and his team moved with precision, disabling the hub's operational core and seizing control of the communication systems. The victory was monumental. With the hub in ruins, the Galactic Empire's logistical network across several sectors collapsed. 
The ripple effects were immediate, with reports of confusion and disarray among their forces. Back on Earth, the news of the operation's success was met with jubilation and pride. Humanity was no longer seen as a minor threat, but as a formidable power capable of challenging the galaxy's mightiest empire. Jax, while pleased with the outcome, remained focused on the future. This victory shifts the tide in our favor, but the war isn't over, he cautioned his crew. We must be vigilant, strengthen our defenses, and prepare for what comes next. The Empire won't take this defeat lightly. The UEDF continued to fortify Earth's defenses, bolstering their positions and expanding their technological capabilities. As they prepared for the next phase of the war, the unity and determination of Earth's people were stronger than ever. They had proven themselves capable of not just surviving, but thriving in the face of galactic adversity. Earth was ready to face any challenge, with Captain Jax West leading the charge into whatever future battles lay ahead. In the wake of Earth's staggering victory over the Galactic Empire's logistics hub, the interstellar community was forced to reevaluate their perception of humanity. What was once mockery had turned into grudging respect. Earth's strategic prowess and tenacity had shaken the core of the Galactic Empire, altering the power dynamics of the galaxy. Captain Jax West stood on the bridge of the UEDF flagship Vindicator, looking out at the stars with a contemplative gaze. He knew the war had reached a critical juncture. With the Empire's forces in disarray, it was time to push for a resolution that would ensure Earth's safety and sovereignty. Jax convened a meeting with his top advisors and representatives from Earth's governments. We've shown the galaxy that we're not to be trifled with, Jax began, his voice filled with conviction. Now it's time to translate our military victories into lasting peace. Commander Kyle Riggs, ever the strategist, was quick to support the notion. We should leverage our position to open diplomatic channels. The Empire's pride is wounded, but there's still a formidable power. A peace treaty would give us room to build and grow stronger. Dr. Eric Sato, the mind behind much of Earth's technological leap, added, And we continue our advancements. Peace doesn't mean complacency. We keep pushing keep innovating. With unanimous agreement, Earth reached out to the Galactic Empire with an offer of peace talks. The invitation was cautiously accepted, and delegations from both sides met on a neutral space station orbiting the desolate planet of Demeter. The negotiations were tense, with both sides laying out their demands. The Empire, humbled yet not defeated, was reluctant to concede too much. Earth, on the other hand, was adamant about its terms. Recognition of Earth's sovereignty a non-aggression pact, and free access to interstellar trade routes. Jax, leading the Earth delegation, was unyielding. We seek peace, but not at the cost of our dignity or our security, he declared in the negotiating chamber, his voice resonant, carrying the weight of Earth's struggle and resilience. The turning point came when Jax presented evidence of the Empire's underestimations and misjudgments about Earth's capabilities, alongside a display of the advanced technology that had secured their recent victories. It was a show of strength, but also an invitation to reconsider Earth as an ally rather than a target. After intense deliberations, a treaty was forged. The Galactic Empire, recognizing the futility of further conflict and the potential benefits of having Earth as a strategic partner, agreed to all of Earth's terms. The treaty signing was broadcast across the galaxy, a historic moment witnessed by billions. Earth had not only defended itself against one of the galaxy's superpowers, but it had also emerged as a recognized state on the galactic stage. Back on Earth, celebrations erupted. Humanity had faced the threat of extinction and had not only survived, but thrived. Jax, hailed as a hero, felt a profound sense of accomplishment, yet he knew this was just the beginning of a new era for Earth. As peace took hold, Earth began to rebuild and expand. New technologies developed during the war were adapted for civilian use, improving quality of life and propelling Earth's economies to new heights. The United Earth Defense Force remained vigilant, but now it also served as a beacon for cooperation and peacekeeping across the galaxy. Captain Jax West, once a soldier prepared for war, now stood as a leader in a world poised for exploration and growth. Earth had earned its place among the stars, not through subjugation or fear, but through strength, unity, and the indomitable human spirit. The future was vast and filled with possibilities, and humanity was ready to meet it head-on, with open skies and endless horizons.